Good to go over there. One mic today. Come on in. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Whole Fit Talks. What's the date today? Seriously. Last day of January. Means nothing. Means everything. Okay. <laughs> For those of you that own your own business, the last day of the month is always a chance to reflect, see where you're at, see what you need to do different next month, right? Always take time to do that. How are we all today? Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Heather. Briar. Hello, Insta. How are we doing over there on live? Hopefully you guys can see us okay. Um, last week, the sound was not so great, very echoey. So apologies for that. That is very important to me. Um, I know I certainly don't listen to a podcast if the sound is not so great. So could you guys give us a quick sound check? Let us know. This should be a little bit better today. We, we, I think we have figured out the issue. Do you want to close the door, babe? Yeah. So Helps with acoustics. Good morning, Annalise. Good morning, Christy. Hi, Catherine, Sarah, Anna, Julie, Katie. So awesome to have you guys. Hi, Anna. All right. Well, hi, Insta. Hi, Jenna, Julie over there. So good. So cool to have you guys join us live. We're going to go for just under an hour today because we know that Instagram live caps at an hour as well. So that's really good incentive for us to stay within those parameters. We have a great topic for you today, and I, I did tee it up last week. We are talking today about habit architecture. Oh, so good, right? Like, you can just feel this is going to put you into a state of being in more control over your life, right? So we're going to get into that in a moment. I just want to go through two quick updates with you. First one is there won't be a live broadcast next week. So we will be back February 14th. Right. Right. Valentine's Day. We will have to do a topic on our favorite love tool. <laughs> oh, I know what mine is. I know. Well, you just teed that one up. I, I do every day for you. So that's how I love you. I make, you, I make it simple for you to make fun of me. <laughs> um, no, we'll, we'll, we'll do a broadcast about some of the things that, that um, work for us. We've been married uh, quite a while. How long? <laughs> How long? Don't put me on the spot. I'm not the girl who like obsesses over anniversaries. Um, but this is our 1,256 months together. Right. So how long have we been married for? In years. So I'll, I'll been, make it easy for you to say years. No. Okay. We got married in 2006, so 12. But we've been together for 20 years. That's right. I was back before the internet was born. I was 18. I still look like I'm 18. Yeah. And I was 17, so I was getting an older lady. That's the goal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. The second update yes. I wanted to let you know about is um, <clears throat> for those of you that are in, in our Whole Fit community, I'm running our biannual 30-day cleanse. So this is the uh, what's called the Essential 30 Cleanse, but this is basically going through doTERRA's incredible 30-day cleanse and restore kit. So um Watch out for that. We'll be talking about it tomorrow. If you want to mark that in your calendar, it's going to start end of Feb. So you're going to want to order everything you need in from the Cleanse and Restore kit. And you'll see me posting quite a bit about it on our social media platform. So if any of you are on other teams and want to join in that sense, go ahead and order what you need from the Cleanse and Restore kit. We do this twice a year, a 30-day uh, focus. Now, I, I like to juice it up with some holistic lifestyle cleansing, right? Um, but for those of you in our community, I run a cleanse every season. That's actually be one of the things I talk about today when it comes to har um, habit architecture. Okay. Are you guys ready for this topic? Let's get ready. More importantly, are you ready no, for I'm this totally topic? Ready, yeah. I have like six pages of notes. However, um, I might not totally use them because the best stuff comes out when you are just in flow, right? So, uh, how do I want to start this? I want us all to think about what our habits are actually meaning to us in our life. How, um, how would we assess the, the habits that are most important in a typical day if you do have a typical day? You've all heard the statement, we are creatures of habit, right? So we literally, we are who we are because of the habits we keep. Now, our habits are directed by beliefs, okay? So it's not just that you are what you do. You certainly are what you think. You are what you believe. 
but our habits are what really dictate our behavior. So by, de by definition, and you guys, this is a super important topic. I want you to tag somebody in your life or, or share this recording with somebody in your life that is going through some changes. Maybe somebody who has an opportunity to um, create a fresh routine for themselves. Maybe they're moving to a new city. Maybe they're starting a new um, healthcare regime. Maybe they've just started with doTERRA. Somebody who is starting to implement different habits. Okay, they're gonna need this topic today. And this will be a good refresh for all of you who believe that you are in control of your life. Newsflash, you are. You are in direct control over how you show up, over the habits that you keep. You are not a tree. You are not stuck. You can change anything in your life. And I, I want to really, we want to empower you around this concept today. So habits are the small decisions that we make every day and the actions that we perform through those habits. So this is really interesting to know. According to Duke University, our habits run 40% of our day without us even thinking about it. So at some point, you've made associations in your life that created the habits that you keep today. So I was reading information on newborns. Yep. Newborn babies have a, a completely clean slate, right? Because they have no associations that have been made. So until their brain starts to do what's called systematic pruning, meaning the brain starts to understand the associations that the human being wants to keep, and it starts to basically uh, release patterns or neurons, neuron activity in the brain. So your newborn baby is actually smarter than you <laughs> in that sense because they haven't made these uh, sometimes disempowering associations, okay, in their life. So. 40% of, of what we do, we don't even think about. We just, we just do it. And at some point, we anchored that type of habit. So habits, habits allow us to not need willpower, right? Because it's just, we're just doing our thing. We, and we're going to share some things today that when you're, when you're looking to have more willpower or keep better habits, it's, it's actually quite simple to do so that it doesn't feel so hard. Because willpower, I mean, I think it's easy to look at somebody who's, really successful or really healthy yeah. or who has a really fit body, let's say something on the outside that looks unattainable to us. It's not, a, it's not that they have better willpower. No, it's that they have better work ethic. They have work, yeah. better, better work habits. Yeah. They've, they've integrated a routine for themselves that helps them do those things that create that outward, what you see like a, like a physically fit body. They have implemented routines so that they don't even have to think about it. Yeah. It's muscle memory. It yeah. just becomes muscle memory, but go ahead. Exactly. So back in 335 BC, you guys have all heard this before, Aristotle is famous for saying, we are what we repeatedly do, okay? Excellence is not an act, it is a habit. So how many of you want to put more excellence into your body, into your work, into your business? How many of you wanna show up with excellence? Because it's, it is totally up to you and the types of habits you're keeping that are going to determine that, right? Welcome, those of you that are on for the first time. Okay, so a really great read on this. And my assistant, Jill, I believe she's on. I have sent her all the links that we're going to upload for you today as I'm talking. So um, a book that you might be interested in reading on this topic is Habits, Why We Do What We Do, okay? So um, we'll, she'll link up the Amazon link for you guys there. But in this book, I want to open up with this. In this book... It explains that all of our habits are dictated by a very simple three-step process. So literally everything you do, right. everything you do happens because of three things. Number one, and, and they're all three R's, really easy for you guys to remember and write down. The first thing is there's a reminder or a trigger. And I'm going to talk about triggers today, okay? If you're frozen on Facebook, just refresh on your end. So there's a reminder, there's something that happens that triggers the second part, which is the response. And again, a lot of the time you're not even aware of it. Keep that in mind as we go through this topic today. So something happens, it triggers a response, which then triggers a reward. There is nothing that you really do just because. A lot of the habits that you're keeping at some point gave you a reward which is why you're, you're, you implemented or anchored that habit. 
Okay, so reminder, routine, reward. Think about that cycle. So habits become very automatic and anchored once we've created a bond between those three things. So first of all, think about how empowering that is to understand. Everything you do has a reminder or a trigger, has a routine that you've implemented, and then it has a reward. So right away, I know a lot of you as we're talking about this, you immediately start thinking of all the, the bad habits. Because when we say the word habit, that's what people tend to think about, right? And, and we all have them. We all have things that we do that, you know, when we're aware and checking in with ourselves, we know we could, we, we, we would love to replace that habit with something better. We all have those things because we're human beings. We, we really want to always be growing and evolving and getting better. There's no like benchmark, like, oh, once I'm there, I'm going to just retire on life. No, we, we want to keep growing. If we're not growing, we're going backwards. Stagnant. Yeah. So growth feels great. Growth is always the goal. But there is no end point. Um, it's, it's truly about every day just thinking, what can I do to move the needle just a little bit? Not because you're a bad person, not because you're not enough, but because growth feels great. As babies, we all were doing things without even thinking about it because growth was the goal. We didn't stop trying to walk the first time we fell because growth, learning to walk is what drove us. But some, some point along the way, we, 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 we think it's about something else. We quit on ourselves too early. So the two things that when we think about habits that we're wanting to replace, and notice I keep saying that because it's not about, oh, I just want to like get rid of a bad habit yeah. or, or eliminate a bad habit. That's impossible. You never eliminate a habit. You replace it with something good. You, you, you rewire. You reprogram yourself around a good habit that replaces the bad, right? So when you have a habit you're looking to release or replace, it's driven by two things, stress and boredom. So stop, drop, and take notes right now. What is right here, number one, what's number one habit that you want to replace in your life? What's something that if you, if you were to look at your daily, a, a day in the life of you, what's something that you would like to replace with a good habit, something that is going to create success for you in some area maybe it's success in your physical body feeling stronger feeling more powerful maybe it's creating more success in your business yeah more time more time mental, like mental capacity everything that could, that could work for you so what is it put them up there yeah put them on the screen share with us there's a lot of power when you share i say this every week when you share there, there you you tap into the power of like the first step of change. And I think if you put it out there as well, then you have, then you're kind of holding yourself accountable for what you just you put are. out there to yeah. the world. So it maybe it'll give you a little bit of motivation too to, to make a change today if you want. Absolutely, right? yeah. And so once you've identified, Ashley says scrolling in social media. Oh. Is that hard for you? No, but. <laughs> Why did you grunt? <laughs> I just noticed people, that's all. I, I have you, think, you think I have that's an, a big one? I have an opinion on that one. But What's yeah. your opinion? Oh, no, it just keep going. It's just, um, there's a good way to end Because <laughs> a lot of people are saying social media. I'll share why. That's actually in my notes, why that's a common one for people. Um, okay, so I want you to identify that one habit you would love to replace with something more empowering, better, more productive, more successful inducing. Why are you doing that habit right now? Is it out of stress or boredom? Because it's one or the other. I'm going to say boredom. That social I'm media? I'm going to say something happy. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think that when it comes to that, and we've all been guilty of it, right? We, we're all guilty of it. But I tend to notice it a lot more when I'm around people and out in public and everything else like that. And I think back to... You know, what, what, what were we, it's that old man thing. What were you guys doing before you had the internet and all that? But it's true. I think it just becomes out of boredom. And when you see people just flicking and flicking and flicking and flicking, like think of what you could be doing in that time that you're just rolling through someone's picture at the Olive Garden or what their shoes are or whatever. Think of what you could be doing for yourself at that moment to better yourself. And it's such a cliche thing to say. But sometimes if you're ever caught in that moment where you're just wham, 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 scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up, 
put a timer on how long you're spending doing that and think, gosh, you know what? I could have knocked out a hundred push-ups or a hundred sit-ups right there that whole time that I was doing that. And, and it's just one of those things where you think like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm just wasting time looking at other people's things and I'm not really doing anything better for myself. And so the, here's the thing. Okay. And, and maybe you don't struggle with this. I want to elaborate. So coming back to Ashley, for example, she says she does this when she has no energy or inspiration to create something of her own. So she consumes someone else's. So what tends to happen, like with boredom, for example, you're, you're feeling badly about yourself, right? Maybe you were trying to do something that was too overwhelming. So this is, this is something for me. So I'm a chronic nail picker. How many of you are with me on that? If I like top of mind, if I could replace that with something that would be a real easy one for me because it's something that I tend to do every day if I'm overwhelmed. When something's too overwhelming, I do something that makes me feel like I'm doing something productive because I'm not doing the thing I meant to do productively. Does that make sense? So when you start consuming someone else's content, when you go on Facebook and get sucked into an hour of looking at what everyone else in the world is doing, it's because you're feeling badly about yourself. Ultimately, because you didn't, you're not making progress in the area you said you were going to in that hour, let's yeah. say. So what Chris mentioned is actually really effective because it, it, rather than just consuming other people's things, go do something else that is gonna make you feel productive that actually moves the needle. So maybe, maybe a rewiring here is when you're feeling drawn to just, you know, drop into the social media vortex, go do a workout. Go do 100, pu 100 push ups or whatever it is. Or go read. Go, go meditate. Yeah, something you know, that's going to. Go play with your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, go read your kids, something like that. And again, I don't want to sound like I'm coming off as pompous because, like you said at the start of this, like we're all guilty of doing it. And I mean, I've checked myself too, where I'm like, what am I doing? This is just a waste. And so, again, I, this is what I'm saying is that. I'm not perfect in any way because I've been guilty of doing this as well. But I found that I had a revelation. I'm like, this is, this is ridiculous. I'm consuming someone else's life where I'm just sitting, basically I'm asked doing nothing, but looking at someone else's thing where I could be out there doing something for myself. And I think mm -hmm. we're filling a void of, well, if I just one more scroll or one more picture, one more, at the end of the day, that all that stuff right there is going to be there at the end of the night when you want to look at it or whatever like that, you're not missing out on anything. That's mm -hmm. why I keep telling people like, you're not missing out on anything. So go up and do something productive for yourself. Look yeah. after yourself, right? Because that picture of that avocado toast is not going to help you do anything today. Right now, in this moment, it's not going to help you get better. Unless but, one of your goals is to eat healthier. Well, that might be an empowering why that's And there's do. always a caveat to that too, right? I mean, if people use different things for different inspiration and motivation, all that. Yeah. But if you really ask yourself and look at yourself and ask yourself the question, like, am I, am I, what I'm doing right now, is that making a difference in my life, for my family's life, for my kids' life? And the answer is probably no. So, you know what I was thinking as you were talking? It's really about simply understanding, you know, what are you feeding? Which, which focus are you feeding? In this moment, are you feeding the feeling of feeling bad about yourself by looking at what everyone else is doing? Or is your intention to find a great avocado toast recipe because one of your goals is to eat healthier this year? Like, I think the intention matters as well. We're going to get into four yeah. really like juicy subtopics here. So I want to keep flowing this. Um, but the number one question people have when it comes to taking more ownership of their life, their health, their business, implementing new habits, it's wondering, well, I wonder how long this is going to take. So how many of you have heard it takes 21 days to basically anchor a new habit? This is a common thing out there. I, I actually love the 21 day philosophy because it makes something feel doable. And in your brain, you, you'll start something if you have the belief that it might just take three weeks to anchor. That feels doable. Um, but I want to tell you where this comes from. So <laughs> It's interesting. It's not proven, but what happened was back in the 1950s, there was a plastic surgeon. His name was Maxwell Maltz. Great name. Good guy. Good guy. Good right winger for the Leafs. Played a couple games. That's not true. Go ahead. Okay. 
So he was a plastic surgeon. When he would perform an operation like a nose job, for example, he noticed it would take a patient about 21 days to get used to seeing their new face. That's where that came from. Same thing would apply if he had a patient he was working on who had a, a limb amputated. It would take them about 21 days before they would adjust to the new situation. So that's actually where that, that philosophy, that thinking came from. But uh, we'll link up, uh, and we'll link up the article to that. What we know from research is that through studying, there was a, there was a small group of 96 people that were studied to integrate just one new habit, a very simple habit, like drinking an extra glass of water. It took them approximately 66 days. So the, the important thing is that there are ways that you can influence habit integration and architecturing your day. There are a couple of things you can look at doing that are going to make it easier, that will get you closer to the 21 day range. Okay. But it might, but if you don't apply the things we're going to talk about right now, it might take you three times at least longer to implement that new habit and you'll probably quit on it. If something's taking too long and the reward is not there, remember, there's, there's the, the reason, the cue, there's the response and the reward. If it takes way too long for you to get to that reward, you're going to quit on the habit, right? So let's go through the four most powerful ways to rework your day, to rework your habits. Okay? You guys are going to love this because it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you realize you are in control. It's actually um, totally doable for you to integrate a new routine and new habits into your life. I'm really excited to share this and we're going to share some of the, the, um, the ways each of these four ways work their way into our day. And I'd love for you guys to share with each other, please, mm -hmm. please share as we go, what comes up for you as we share each of these things, what in your life do you recognize? Oh yeah, that is a cue for me. That's what cues this positive habit in my life. Okay. Please share. People love when you share. Okay. Trigger number one or cue number one is time. So I want you to think, and this is actually the one of the most preferred methods of creating positive habits, is to look at how time is dictating what you do, okay? So for a lot of people, what they immediately think of is, there, is morning, time. You wake up, you do this. It just becomes like clockwork. A lot of you don't have to actually think about going to the bathroom or um, going down and starting up the coffee pot, or whatever else you do, right, when the, when the alarm clock goes off, taking a shower. I mean, you have this, this built-in flow, okay? So we wanted to share with you, uh, because morning time is a really common area where you can now layer in a positive habit because there are things you're already um, doing because of time. Alarm goes off. Did we lose people? Oh, no, we're back. Okay. I think we're good. All right, let us know if you can't see us. The screen just dropped for some reason. Okay, so I want you to think about your morning, what you're already doing without even thinking of it. Now, this is one of the, again, this is going to be the, the, the most popular method of cueing a, pop, a, a positive habit. So for, I'll share mine, then I want you to share yours. Okay, simple things. When I wake up, the very first thing I do is I head to the bathroom and I scrape my tongue. I've talked about this in past broadcasts. I, I think in the episode where I talked about the five top health habits, this came up. So if you want to go back and listen to that episode, that's going to be a good one for you. But scraping the tongue, trust me, once you've scraped your tongue, you'll never go back to not scraping your tongue. The reward is almost instant. You see the reward in the sink. Okay, enough said there. I'm not going to gross everyone out, but... Tongue scraping feels really good. It's actually quite an instant reward and it's helping you begin your day with freshness. Okay, so I scrape my tongue, I brush my teeth. Um, obviously we use on guard toothpaste. I'll mention some of the things I do there. And then I, I do, um, I'll either do oil cleansing on my face, which is simply some coconut oil or olive oil with a little drop of frankincense or lav. And I, you know, you can look up oil cleansing method if you want, or I'll use Virage. Okay, then here's a, here is a cue, because if I'm already in the time habit, I have this beautiful display of my favorite oils and roller bottles. So every morning, right, without even thinking of it, 
I roll a little peppermint on my temples. I put a little rose essential oil, the touch rose, under my eyes. And I, I work in my, my Virage moisturizer as well. And then I do, um, if people are, if, if our home is kind of feeling run down or if it's during um, like cold and flu season, for example, I'll roll some On Guard right on my throat area, um, maybe back of my neck. And then the last thing I do before I head downstairs is I make our bed. Chris wakes up earlier than I do, okay? So I make the bed before I go downstairs. Here's why I do that. We're gonna link up for you yeah. a really cool YouTube uh, video by um, Navy SEAL William McRaven. Bill McRaven. Bill McRaven, yeah. good guy. <laughs> good guy. Good guy. Nice guy. <laughs> so I love the name of the, the title of this video is if you wanna change the world, start by making your bed. And it's so good and it basically it illustrates how powerful it is to get into action right away. And one of the things he shares is even if you have a bad day, at least you come home to a made bed. Yeah. Good. So we'll link that up. So that's what I do. Now, one of the things, women, I want to point out here, one of the things you'll notice about what I've just shared with you is I, I do what I need to do, the simple step process to go downstairs and love on my little family. I don't, I don't rush downstairs right away um, and, and pour from an empty cup. Now, for some of you, this is your miracle morning, we might call it. You might actually be getting up one or two hours before the rest of the house. That's wise if you feel like you're starting your day already behind. But this is an example of how I begin my day already from that place of, okay, I'm good. I've got peppermint on my temples. My, my mouth is clean. I've, I've taken care of um, promoting a glow on my face and I'm ready to go and our bed's made. So let's, let's do this. Let's have the best day ever. Okay, so, so that's something that I do without even thinking of it because I have everything right there and time cues that without me even thinking about it. Over to you. Okay, well, I have a little different strategy and it's not as like glowy and everything else. And what I like to say, and you've heard me say it before, is oh, setting the tone, that's a good way to put it. I like to call this my non-negotiables. Everything I'm gonna talk about here are non-negotiable, have to be done, Call me selfish, call me a brute, whatever, but I'm sorry, this needs to be done in order for me to be productive that day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for me, it's, it's always, 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 always about getting up early. I need to get up early, and I'm talking early, I'm talking five o'clock between 5.30. If I'm up at quarter to six, I have to struggle. I beat myself because I think, oh, I, I've, I've slept in too long, now I have to pick myself up and, and get to work. Anyways, I need to be up early. And the very first thing I need to do in the morning is do something physical. I have to row. I have to do weights. I have to skip. I have to do something physical because to me, that gets my body going. That gets my body started. And I'm alone by myself. I have my own thoughts. Um, you know, there's no, there's no noise. There's no distraction. As we know, during the day, there's always distraction around you. You could be at home alone for 24 hours and there's always going to be a distraction. You mm -hmm. could say to yourself, I'm not going to do anything today, but you know, that always pops up. So the reason I, I need to get up early, I need to do something physical like that is because I know that during the day, there's going to be a distraction that's going to take me away from that. I'm the type of person that I, I need to move. My body needs to move all the time. And if I'm sedentary like that, then I get, I get really, then I start being the guy who's scrolling through social media all day. I can't, I, I need that. So that to me is non-negotiable. I have to get up early. I have to do something physical. And a lot of people like to talk about getting up early and like, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. Guys, it's the simplest thing you do. Go to bed tonight, set your alarm for five o'clock, 530, whatever you find decent enough. And you want to try this. Let the alarm go off. As soon as you hear it, get out of bed. Put your feet to the ground, move to the bathroom and get out of bed. Now that said, it sounds hard. Guys, trust me, it's not hard. If You've you, been doing that as long as I've known you. Yeah. When do you remember actually making the decision to implement that? And how long did it take? Uh, I think it was probably when I was about nine years old when my dad would come in the room and basically smack <laughs> me in the head and go, you're missing the whole day. Get oh, the 70s. Like that. So that's probably where it started. But it was for me, it's like I like to know. The reason I do this is I this again, this is going to sound very selfish, whatever. 
I like to know that I'm up. Everyone's saying, no, 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 not selfish, okay. not selfish. Don't but worry. I like to know that I'm up before the rest of the world. I like to know yeah. that I'm putting in the work before the rest of the world. I love knowing that some of my friends are still in bed. Some of them may be hung over, whatever like that. I love knowing that I beat them to the day. And <laughs> it's this weird thing in my head. But again, this is just me talking. Not everyone's going to have this opinion. But it's just one of those things where I just like to know that I'm beating the world. You know, I've got, I've got the world right now because I'm ahead of the day. Mm -hmm. So that works for a lot of people. Uh, and, and to, sorry, and to, yeah. to add on to that, um, what I also like to do with that time is the night before I go to bed at night, I have my, my things set out. So I'll have my shorts set out. I'll have my vitamins set out. Not, Don't get to that yet. Okay. Okay. That's a Anyways. separate cue. But what I do want to point out, what's going on with my hair here? What I do want to point out is, you are, you are creating the best possible day because of how you begin the day. So now your morning routine that you just shared is cueing the rest of the day, like a domino effect, yes. you in control of your day because you're not waking up reacting. Because it's the one thing in the day, really, that you have total control over yeah. when you're up early in the morning. There's not a, true. anyone's around to bother you. There's no distraction. No one's calling. No one's emailing. No one's, you know, no one needs uh, another slice of toast or more cereal or anything like that. It's just you and your thoughts. And it's what you do to what you do in that moment, you have complete control over. And to me, that's, that's, that's why I need it. Awesome way to begin your day. The one other thing I want to share before we move on to Q or trigger two is I use time in the form of my Google calendar. So those I've talked about this many times, those of you that know me, know that my if it's not on my calendar it's probably not happening I'm very committed to living my life by design I don't say yes to somebody who wants to meet for coffee today because I have my day is planned and I, I I honor that so my calendar by by our time clock um, basically triggers the the habits that I keep sometimes especially if they're newer habits so one of the things I have shared in the coaching tools section of my website fullfit.com you'll see coaching tools one of the thing I one of the things I share in there is an image of my week by design and you'll notice that I block off days for certain themes so I will have um, you know whole whole connection days uh, blocked off or we might call that follow-up where I that's my cue I don't take calls that day I don't mentor that day I don't do other things my whole focus that day is building positive connections because if it's not in there I don't do it um, it's not a natural habit for me there's because there's a million different things I could focus on in my business right so if I don't have that focus in there then that the, the habits that build a successful business are not going to happen so that that is one way I, I highly encourage you to use some form of a calendaring system so that you can can schedule the habits that you want to keep okay so um, take a take a look we just linked up the coaching uh, tools link for you there if you want to have a look at my week by design and how I chunk based on time okay so the second trigger is location or proximity proximity is is power you may have heard that before um, if you've ever, you know, walked into your kitchen and there's a big plate of freshly baked cookies, are you more likely to eat a cookie or not? If, if something's right in front of you, you're more likely to do the thing that's right in front of you. When people are getting started with doTERRA, for example, one of the best things you can do to support this new routine of choosing health in every moment is to have essential oils within close reach. So where people don't succeed in implementing this lifestyle is they go to a class, they get their, their starter collection of oils, and then it comes and they, they, they don't get to using them right away. They don't use their curiosity to learn what oils they could use in the moment. But the bigger thing is they just have their oils sitting in a box down in the kitchen. So at night when that, you know, issue comes up, they're not thinking of using their oils right away. So, one of the best things you can do is outfit your home. Be prepared for this very healthy lifestyle to kick in for you if you have, you know, if your essential oils are within proximity to where you are right now. So think of where you spend the most time. I have five different essential oils right here on my desk that promote focus, 
that um, relieve tension, that shift my mood in the moment. So if I'm here and I'm working on something and I'm getting overwhelmed, rather than pick at my skin, I could reach for that oil to shift in that moment because proximity is power in changing that habit. So, well, look at your yeah. office too. I mean, that's a point of that. Like your whole office is surrounded by, you could just get up from this desk at any point and row yeah. or do a kettlebell swing or hundred kettlebell swings or some, anything like that. You kept everything close to you where you do, where you do spend most of your time. You yeah. do spend most of your time here, mm -hmm. right? So you've, you've made an environment that works for you that, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. And I mean, to the people listening, I mean, everyone has, a, has the ability to do that as well, right? Yeah. Keep everything close that you need to make your day better. Yeah, right? absolutely. And that was in my notes because your, your environment, your location um, is very important, very important to your success and what you're focusing on. So like Chris mentioned, my whole office, as soon as I walk into this space, action kicks in. The very first thing when I walk in in the morning after the kids have gone off to school, um, and again, I have habit, I have cues right there. As soon as they walk out that door, I think about dinner. I pull out what I need to. I get the crock pot going, tidy up the kitchen, so that as soon as I walk into my office, I'm ready to take action on what I need to get done, and I don't have other things on my mind. So I walk in, I start diffusing oils right away, I turn on music or some sort of mindset training, some sort of podcast, audio book, You'll notice I don't listen or watch the news, okay? Um, I'll talk about that. But that, as soon as I walk in here, the whole space encourages me to be somebody who's taking action and is lit up and inspired. So think about where you do, where you spend most of your time. If it's in an office, how can you change that environment to create the kind of habits you're wanting to implement? Um, maybe it's installing a pull-up bar over the door in your office. Because one of the cues you have is every time you walk into your office, you're going to do 10 pull-ups because one of your, your main goals this year is to be stronger in your body. So think about how you can layer a, a trigger for something because of the location or proximity. So um, what did I want to share in here? Uh, okay, I'm not going to share that part. So... Yeah. So I mentioned essential oils, having them within access because they are such a game changer in the moment when it comes to taking a higher level of self-care. Um, I mentioned my office. One other thing before Chris shares his thoughts on this is um, water. Water, is this, this is the number one thing you could do for your body this year is to implement drinking more high, um, high quality filtered water more of it throughout your day, at least half your body weight in ounces of water. Again, check out the top five health habits where I go through these five things. Water's top of the list. So I always, 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 you see me whenever we're doing lives or I'm, uh, if you've ever been in the car with me or if we've ever gone to a movie together, I have this big honker right next to me. I drink about four or five of these a day. That's what my body functions the best on. It is the number one thing I do to have a healthy body. I add one or two drops of a high limonene oil, um, like tangerine or grapefruit or lemon to this, and it's always within reach. So that's a good cue. If your water bottle's right there, are you really gonna go reach for a can of Coke? You know, your body is, and, and some of you, snacking is an issue. You're eating a lot of unhealthy foods. Usually you're thirsty. So have this nearby. Okay, you have a I, good one to well, share. I just wanna ask this one question, because Bria, Bria Slaney, do you, leave, do you leave space for spontaneity at all? She says, she's such a planner, but feel like I don't leave space for flexibility. I'm turning down opportunities. Okay, uh, Bria, to your point, like, don't get the wrong impression here that we're robots and we, like, have our days planned to the minute, to the second, the hour. The reason we do these things is so that it leaves room in the day for spontaneity. You know, yes. like, for example, the reason I like to get up early and do my thing in the morning and everything else is because I feel like, Again, I go back to the term, it's a non-negotiable for me. I need to do it in order to, for my day to have spontaneity. I get, I get angry with myself because there's no excuse for not doing what I want to do early in the morning like that if I don't do it. So doing the small things like what Angie and I are talking about right now, these little, these little tips, that leaves you the rest of the day, the rest of the night for that spontaneity. So I love that you asked that, Bria, and so good. Right? 
because yeah. everyone's got this 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 feeling that like oh planning 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 and and it it doesn't have to be like that you plan for the things that are important yeah. and really look at what's important do those do those 100% right and the rest of the stuff doesn't matter that's what leaves you the time it's that whole thing right that discipline i was just going to say this discipline, is your favorite book yeah that discipline yeah. of you doing the things that need to get done gives you the freedom later to for Bria's example of spontaneity. Share your favorite book on that topic. Discipline equals freedom. Yeah, by Jocko Willink. Yeah. This, this is a really important thing to understand. And Bria, the reason a lot of people say yes to too many things and going to the mall with their friend when they were supposed to be doing work on their business, yeah. the reason people do that is because they are consistently not following through with the things they said they were gonna do. And they're feeling awful about themselves and that's why they say yes to these things. So I love what Chris shared there. Identify what your priorities are. What is most important for you to accomplish today in your business, as a mother, running your home, as a wife, as a husband, as a friend, whatever. What's most important to you today? Do that and then you have the freedom to say yes to things that might pop up in the flow. Yeah, but you know, literally you may or may not want to do anyways. But, but at least you're in control of yeah, that. Yeah, you have control of what you're doing. So. And I've shared that before. I my typical response to things is no, because I'm I'm so focused on I I know what I what I man okay backtrack for a second. I know what I need to do to be my highest self as a mother, as a wife, as a daughter, as a friend, as a as the business owner of a multi million dollar business. I know what state. I need to be in. And so the, the good majority of things that come across my inbox or all the thousands of ways people can get a hold of you today gets a no because I'm already in that space of taking ownership. But, but when that thing comes along, that's a yes. Totally. I'm in control of that. So there's a couple of th layers to that question, but yeah, it's not about being a robot. No. Okay. Share proximity at work for okay, you. How for important me, proximity. This is, and this, you can use this for anything because at the end of the day, it's, it all, it all equals success. For one of the things that I need to do at work is obviously with my job, I'm a firefighter. We need to get on the trucks quick for alarms. We need to um, be ready to go as soon as the lights go on, we're at the door. So for proximity, and you can use this as an example for anything, is I need to have all my gear right in front of me, exactly the way I want it, laid out, so I don't even have to think. It's just muscle memory. I put it on, my boots go on, suspenders, zip up, jacket, hood, gloves, out the door, under 40 seconds, mm -hmm. just like that. And now obviously this isn't gonna relate to everyone, but my point is, is if you're gonna, if you wanna make some better habits and stuff like that, have, like Anna said, have things around those triggers that are gonna help you succeed, that are gonna help you get out the door in 30 seconds flat or whatever. You know, one of the things I do in the morning is um, I have my workout gear in another room because I know I have to get up because if I fumble around in the room, I'm going to wake you up. Most likely I'm waking the kids up because one of them is in bed with us and, <laughs> and everything else. So I'll have it in the other room. I'll have my vitamins right there beside my, my gear, or whatever I need. I'll have my swell bottle filled with water from the night before. It's all ready to go. And it's just like, I don't even think. It's Plug just, and play. Yeah, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, it's paint by numbers, I like to say. Mm -hmm. It's just painting by numbers. It's so easy. And before you know it, I've gotten up early. I've gotten dressed. I've had my vitamins. That's three things out of the day that like matter so much to help me focus yeah. on the rest of the day. So getting back to my gear thing is I need to know where everything is at any moment. I need to know that stuff so well that if I'm in a dark basement or a hallway or whatever like that, it just becomes muscle memory. If I get hung up mm -hmm. on something, oh, well, I know my knife's right here, or I know my my uh, my my uh, rope is right here. Like it just becomes so easy for me. And yeah. and you can set those up for yourself too. Do something the night before. Set it up the night before, so you just get up, do whatever, and it's right there, and it, you don't even think about it. So empowering, right? Because here's the thing. You know, I want you guys to think about somebody right now that you feel has success in an area that you admire and think is unattainable for you. 
let's say it's 5 a.m. club, what Chris just described, but did you realize that he does a quick five minute routine the night before to make that possible? He doesn't just wake up with this excitement at 10 to five every morning, but because he knows he has this routine in place for himself, it, it causes him to do it. So there's the reward. There's the instant reward. Not to mention the feeling of going into his day in control, strong, feeling good. There's a lot of rewards that start to cue in, but the main reward is he's going to get up and it's all already ready for him. He has just, I don't mean to, I don't know. He has just like parented himself. Women, this is huge. How many of you could mother yourself better mm -hmm. through a new routine? You do it for your kids. Um, if you're going to, if your commitment is to get up in the morning and exercise, a real simple cue for that is just set out your, your shoes and your workout clothes right outside of your bedroom door. So when you set the alarm, you're not fumbling like Chris said. Yeah. Like it really is so easy when you look at it. And I come back to this understanding of, Everything you want to change in your life, you can. You are not a tree. You are not stuck. Because, Just it's right there. Yeah, and one of my questions is because, as you know, like everyone's done this before. Where if you walk through a kitchen and you thought on the other side of that kitchen is a pot of gold, I guarantee you that you know that pot of gold's still there and it's waiting for you. It's not going anywhere. But if you're walking through a kitchen, I guarantee you, you'd walk by the sink and you'd see a dish in the sink and you think, "Oh, I got to stop and clean that dish off," or I walk by the the dishwasher and think, well, you know, the dishwasher needs to be empty. I should do that before I get to that pot of gold. There's, it's that whole thing where there's always those little distractions in your way. And that's why I keep going back to this point of, you know, if you're, if you're a mother or you have small kids and all that, make it non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Get up early, do what you need to do to make yourself better for your kids, your husband, your day, your job, your work. Don't settle for stopping and thinking, well, I gotta unload the dishwasher because that takes three minutes of your time. And then think, well, you know, in that time that I've done it, I'm kind of hungry right now. So I'm gonna make myself something little, but then I'm gonna walk over there and get that pot of gold. But then on the pot of gold, oh, the, the, the counter needs cleaning off. I'm gonna do that. Next thing you know, you're like, I'm done. My kids are up and I'll do this tomorrow, right? So I wanna comment, Tiffany Swan asked a great question. How do you reset your mindset to not dread the preparation? So here's the thing, you have to be disciplined until habit kicks in. So again, come back to that, the three R's, right? As soon as reward starts to happen, habit is anchored. As soon as you're, you understand, as soon as the discipline that you've implemented for however many days it takes, whether it's 21 or 66, as soon as that discipline happens regularly and consistently, the habit loop is formed and then you don't dread it. You don't even think about it. So discipline is the stage before habit anchors in. And I, I will say one thing too, like you talk about dread and yeah, you dread doing something and all that, but does that dread, is it gonna cause you to get hurt? Is it gonna get hot, cause you to get, you know, bleed or suffer pain or, or die or anything? That, that dread's not gonna do it. We all do things in the day that we dread, but we know we have to do it. Right? For me, it's emptying the dishwasher. I keep going back. I dread doing it. Yeah. But you know what? Again, it's not to compare anything, but we all have things in our day that we dread, but we all here are adults and we have to do things that suck. We just do. That's the world we live in. Like we're not kids anymore. So you have to get over that dread. That dread's not going to kill you. That dread's not going to take money out of your pocket. And that dread's not going to injure your your, mm -hmm. your mind. It sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But just do it. Get it over with. And it's not that bad. Well, and this is why we say do the heavy thing first. If you are entering your office and you've got three or four things you know you need to do today, do the one that's going to consume the most energy and resource and mind share because then you move into those other things with ease. You've done the hard thing, just like Chris said, he, he does the workout in the morning. If he was to say, oh, I'll do it at one o'clock, one o'clock becomes two, becomes three, becomes never. So, you know, you have to sometimes knock it out. They love your tough love, okay. <laughs> um, Maggie mentioned, you know, once you've experienced a day with that kind of intention, you just never go back. So again, once that reward kicks in of the early morning and how that felt, or what a big one is exercise. And I'll tell you right now, like nobody loves to exercise. But the intention behind why you do it is very important. So what if rather than exercising to lose weight, 
You decided you were going to exercise to feel more powerful in your body because that's going to affect everything. One of the, one of the loops I create for myself is I know the days that I exercise, I'm going to have the best day ever. I'm going to be creative. I'm going to be inspired. I'm going to, I'm going to set the wheel in motion. I'm going to blow love out into the world, inspiration if I work out. But how I close that loop is not only knowing I'm going to, I'm going to be in a more powerful state, but I blend up a delicious smoothie after I work out and the endorphin rush that I get through those two things is why I do it. That it's the best feeling ever. I don't work out to have a six pack or to look a certain way. For me, it's a very intrinsic um, motivator. It's, it's about the internal state. It's, a, it's the feeling I have. So what if you sh switched your intention around why you're doing the thing you're doing? Okay, number three, we've got two more to go through. So the third trigger is a preceding event. And this is my favorite one, okay? This is where we're gonna talk about habit stacking. So there are a lot of things you do as a response to something that happens. Very clear example of this is what do you do the minute your phone lights up with a notification? I dare you to try and not check that. That notification triggers a response in you which cues a, um, a dose of um, dopamine. So you're, you're getting this rush through doing that, which is why you keep doing it. But if you want to be somebody who is more focused, and focus is your ultimate edge if you're a business owner, it's why you'll grow and someone else won't. So if your goal is to become more focused, start to cultivate a higher power in that moment. Cultivate the dopamine rush that comes with doing what you said you were going to do in that moment when your phone is lighting up. That is your greatest opportunity to leverage um, you know, what we know about preceding habits. Okay, so habit stacking. Let's talk about things you're already doing. You get up in the morning, you have a shower, you make coffee, you drop your kids off at school, you eat, right? You have breakfast, lunch, dinner. You have a commute possibly to work. Your kids go out, have a bedtime. You have a bedtime. So these preceding events are all a great opportunity for you to stack a new habit because it's already happening, okay? So it's already strongly wired into your brain. So it's not quite as, as difficult. So... Um, some examples of, of habit stacking, you know, for me, gratitude is a very important um, component of my life. It, 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 is, it is how I experience joy, is, is building in opportunities to feel gratitude. So one of the things I do is, as I'm sitting to eat, in order to focus myself to be more present, I think of something I'm really grateful for right there in that moment. I don't always say it. I don't sit at the table. I, yeah. We don't. I'm um, grateful for my husband today again. Like I never hear that. No, and sometimes we say grace for our food. Sometimes we don't. That, that's one thing some people will do to integrate that habit of gratitude. But I, in the moment, I, I pause as I'm eating because eating is a cue to think about what I'm so grateful for right here in this moment. It helps me be more present with my kids if they're sitting at the table and just come from a space of love. The other cue around mealtime for me is my vitamins. If I'm not sitting down to a meal, I'm gonna to forget to take them. Supplementation is very important to me for staying sharp, for staying strong, and for staying healthy. It's something I'm very committed to on a daily basis, so I do it at lunch and at dinner. I always have my vitamins right then and there. Um, one of the cues with my kids, I've talked about this before, as soon as they have um, gotten dressed for the day, 10 minutes or so before we're going to go out to the mudroom and get all their gear on for the Canadian winters, I have a little box that cues a routine for me to brush their hair, to put their on guard roller bottle up and down their spine. Um, I'll use an emotional blend oil like Citrus Bliss to just create a nice feeling as they are going to head out the door. They have their doTERRA A to Z chewable and they have a, a vitamin D K2 drop. And that's location, it's right beside the door. That's location as well, yeah. proximity. It's right there by the door. But the cue for me is, okay, we're about to go out and get their coats on for the, for the school day. So it cues me to do those things with them because that is a very important part of their health. It's why we can travel a lot and come home and they, they they, do, they get an average of one to two colds a year because I'm very consistent with our routines with them. Um, one other thing I'll mention, uh, actually two more, because this is my favorite, and I yeah, want you to no, think if there's any more. You can, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so one other thing is um, when I come home, one of my cues is 
I sit in the garage. I try to remember to turn the car off first. Sometimes he comes out. He's like, hello. Carbon monoxide poisoning. But as soon as I come in the garage, before I go in the house, I clear my mind. So I'll look at my calendar for the next day, especially if I've been out running errands and I need to just, you know, focus on putting the other hat on of mother. When I walk in the door, I'll clear my mind. Um, so that's a great trigger for me. Um, I mentioned working out and making a smoothie. That's a cue for me. Helps me get more greens and protein into my day. Um, meditation is something I'm, I'm tapping into more this year. So one of the things I, I did until this becomes routine is at three o'clock in my calendar, it's like stop, drop, and meditate. So I will, um, I'm being prepared to go into the next role of mother. My kids are about to come home. So I look at my calendar for the next day and I go do a five minute just five minutes, because I'm not gonna do 30, because it's brand new to my routine. Five minutes of just sitting, I usually put an eye mask on, and I put earbuds in with a great um, a great song, some kind of yoga meditation or something. So think about that, think about things you're already doing and how you can stack one more habit in. The last trigger, you guys, trigger number four, is your is people in your life. So this is gonna blow your mind. Research, out of the New England Journal of Medicine discovered, this is a massive pool of people they, they, they watched for this research, like into the thousands. If your friend becomes obese, your chance of becoming obese is 57%, even if that friend lives hundreds of miles away. Because of your, and this is the proximity thing again, right? This is who you surround yourself with. Jim Rohn is famous for his quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So my question for you here to unpack, if you have habits that are not serving your highest good, how are the people in your influ in your life influencing that? You know, if your goal this year is to not drink as much alcohol, do you have a regular routine of going to the bar with friends who drink a lot of alcohol? You, you might actually not even want it, but because you go with them to the bar, you end up drinking. I mean, there, there are a lot of ways people in our life influence that. Um, I mentioned I don't watch the news because I believe everything we do is either coming from a place of fear or love. So I want to feed love in my life to see the world through that lens. I believe there is so much good happening in our world because there is. You're only going to see one side of it, which is fear-based if you have a regular routine of reading the newspaper. So this is, you know, when you think about how other people or sources of media in your life are conditioning you to have certain habits in place, that's a really smart way to start. And I mean, you wanted to share something on this point before we end yeah, yeah. of the people in your life and how they influence your habits. Well, yeah, I, I, again, I preface this by saying like, I, this is something that you learn, I think, as you get older and, and you realize because we've all gone through that that process of having the friends that, well, it's Friday night, where we doing? we you know, we going out, we drinking, we doing that. And then as you get older, you realize you got to start cutting the fat a little bit and being around people that you know are going to make you better. People that, I like to say, people that you sort of aspire to be. Well, they'd look at you as the same level as, as them, but like secretly inside, you're like, man, that guy's got it going on. I, I want to be around that guy. And I have friends like that too as well. And I don't have a, I have a very small, small circle of friends, friends that I've been, you know, that we, since we were kids and it's very small, but I admire those guys, the guys that I work with. I admire those guys. I They're love so those great. guys because mm -hmm. you know what? They make me better. And it's just, again, I don't want to keep going back to this whole, like, uh, you know, physical thing or whatever like that, but we're at work and they, 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 as being guys, we shame each other into being better, you know? We'll shame each other into going downstairs and working out or, or, or you know, you need to do better in training or that was a kind of a crappy knot that you did. Like, you need to do better. These guys that I surround myself, they push you to be better and to do better. And at the end of the, you know, at the end of it, you as a person don't want to let those people down. And I think if you shrink your circle a little bit, and really take a look at who you're, who you're, you're, you're hanging with, and everything else. Are they making you better? And do you want to be more like them? Mm -hmm. That's that's sort of one of my biggest things. Like I got a great friend; he's my best friend, and we pretty much well we haven't, but he's you know he, he's a professional athlete for 
over 10 years, playing at the highest level you could ever play in. And the admiration I have for that guy is amazing. But he talks to me and goes, you know what, dude? I wish I had done what you had done. So there's that sort of mutual respect, that admiration. We both sort of push each other to become better as people. So, and that's the people you want to be with. Those are the type of people you want to hang out with. And that's all. This is a, this is a very important one. And you know, if you feel like the people in your life are influencing your bad habits to remain, that it's time to put yourself in proximity of people who are living the life that you want to live, who have those habits. So a really obvious example in doTERRA world is how many of you are at the rank of silver or above and haven't yet decided whether or not you're going to the leadership retreat in, in March. That's a, that should be something that does not even, you don't even question. You need to put yourself in, in spaces where literally, almost like by osmosis, the people that are successful and have the mindset and the business results and the lifestyle that you want, almost by osmosis it comes to you because you surround yourself around with those people. So this is a really important one to understand and take a look at and it really requires ownership of your time, you know, deciding to not focus on relationships that are disempowering you and, and creating bad habits to anchor. Okay, so we want to close out um, just by sharing if we, you know, if we look at the these various triggers and cues and all the ways that um, a healthy lifestyle actually exists. I wanted to share real quick. If I look at my day. Because, you know, this question comes at me sometimes or it's like, how do you how do you do it? And why, you know, you're so positive and you seem to be just, um, you know, really successful in what you do. It does not happen. No. Just happenstance, you know, like it, it really takes focus. It takes awareness and a regular practice for me when I end the day is to think about that day and what felt I've mentioned this before, what feels heavy, what feels light. And I move towards the direction of excitement and what feels light and what feels inspiring. And I, I believe I'm in complete control over my success and over my health. And because of that, I make decisions from that belief and I create habit loops that support that. Guys, you understand that? You, and you are too. It just depends on whether or not you believe you are or not. If you don't believe, that your body is incredibly wise and healing all the time, then you're not going to incorporate something like essential oils or supplements because you have a belief that it's up to your doctor to create health for you. So you have to really look at what's, what is the belief behind why you do the things you do. And once you come to a place of feeling empowered, you will create those habit loops that are going to support a healthy lifestyle. So for me, I mentioned water. I always have this bottle with me. Chris mentioned water. He always has it on the counter with his gear in the morning. So that's a trigger for water. Supplements are habit too. So I always have my supplements right on the kitchen counter. And whenever I eat, there's the trigger, lunch or dinner, I take my supplements. Um, one other thing I'll mention, Sunday afternoons for me is success building time. I do a really simple routine where I plan out our meals for the week. I use a service called plan to eat. My assistant will link that up for you. I plan our meals. I fill my supplement container and I look at my calendar for the upcoming week to see what needs to come off, what needs to go on. Because again, I'm operating from a belief of complete control and ownership. If my life is awful, if it feels awful and I'm operating from this low vibe, um, it's going to affect everything, my business, my family, my relationships. So I, I put myself in a position on Sunday afternoons to take control of that. Uh, I mentioned sweat and smoothie every, you know, almost every day. That's the goal. And that's a time cue for me. I work out almost every day at 12. So what am I not doing? I am not saying yes to a coffee date with a friend if my, that, that's probably going to happen in the evenings or on the weekends. I'm not saying yes to hopping on the phone to mentor someone at 12 o'clock because I'm honoring that priority. Um, and then the last thing I do, I want to mention here is a cue with the seasons. A change of season for me cues a new routine, which is why I do quarterly cleanse programs for our community, because it's important to stop, to detach from habits that are not empowering us and to move into a space of ownership. Okay, so a couple of links that we'll share real quick as we close out for you. 
check out the coaching tools section of my website. You'll see an example of a week by design. You also might want to go back and listen to the 2018 Beautiful Life Blueprint. This incorporates, um, again, a lot of awareness around what kind of year are you going to create? What what do you want? What kind of body do you want to live in? What kind of results do you want to see in your business? And what are the habit loops based on everything we talked about today that you need to integrate in order for that life to happen? This is the thing behind the thing. There's always a thing behind the thing. 5 a.m. doesn't happen for Chris just because it sounds nice and it's just going to happen and he's, he naturally wakes up at that time. He does now, but when he initially needed to integrate that, it was because there was a great reward that kicked in. Right, so that discipline equals freedom and eventually equals habits. Um, one other thing that you'll see on the coaching tools section of wholefit.com is a, um, a document called the 12 Causes of Health. A little spin off of the causes of disease, which is what always makes headlines. Um, let's talk about the causes of health. What if you had one focus every month this year and that was it? You didn't say you were going to do like multiple things in a, in a day or in a month. One thing, like an extra glass of water every day for one month, you would anchor that habit in and then it would be happening because of the re reward of feeling um, healthier because of the water. So then it, you, you move into the next month with confidence. So great stuff to dig into today. Take some time this week. This is your, your action. I'm going to cue you into action right now. You've just listened to this podcast. Let's get you into action. Before you hop off to something else, take a moment and write down what is clear to you right now in your life that you need to replace with a good habit and try to, try to pick something really doable, really small. Yeah. And let us know. Yeah. Post in the hear, comments. I want to hear that. Yeah. I want to hear what everyone wants. What What's top to of mind for you? Yeah. What do you know? And, and what would it look like to replace that with a good habit? Okay, what's the good habit? And then what's the loop? What's going to be the, what's going to cue you into that good habit? We are so tempted as human beings to take on too much all the time. Women do this, I think, more than men. Yeah. We, we, we set ourselves up to fail right out of the gate. So set yourself up for success. Pick something small. Think about what your loop will be. What's going to be your trigger, your cue? And think about what the reward would probably be. That's the, get your own belief behind it. What's gonna, what's going to get you through the, the early days of discipline before habit kicks in? All right, Peters, anything else? That's it. I'm That's nothing. it. I'm done. We're good. Okay. Make your move. <laughs> Pick your thing. You're in control. You're not a tree. Great news for all of us. You're not stuck. You, Every one of us can take ownership for our health, for our business, for our results, but it starts with a decision. I hope this topic unpacks something for you where you realize everything you want to have in your life, you can. It just takes, you know, intention around habits. Sam Jones, if you're up till 2 a.m., you're not missing anything. There's nothing good going on at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Get to bed at a normal time. You're an adult. Do it right. Get up early and get after in the morning. 2 a.m., unless you love infomercials. I don't even know if they do those anymore. Infomercials are now Facebook browsing. Whatever. Get to bed. 2 a.m. You don't need to be up at 2 a.m. unless you're working. All right, you guys. We will see you back February 14th for a little episode on love. See ya.